Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another TMNT video, and today we're going to be checking out the final figure, as far as we know, for the NECA Toys TMNT X Universal Monsters line, Donatello, in all his rap bandage glory, because he's the invisible man, the invisible turtle, right? On the sides of the box, you got the glorious artwork for this line, along with the back of the box that has just been very cool, just full of creativity, ideas that are just hearkening back to the spirit of Universal Monsters. On the bottom side of the package, you got everyone involved with the creation of this figure along what's in the box. So thank you very much to all these fine folks for putting these figures together. Now, mine came from Amazon, but look for Donatello to hit stores relatively soon. In true NECA fashion, you open up the box, you get to see some nice photos of said figure, right? Holding the bow staff, and then you can get a glimpse at what you are buying. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot spooky cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new NECA Toys TMNT X Universal Monsters, Donatello as the Invisible Man. And while I got all you Kevin Bacons here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my TMNT videos. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So, here is everything taken out of the packaging. NECA Toys always gives you a lot of fun accessories. And this Donatello figure is no exception. I'd rather like a figure that comes with a lot in the box. You do get a microscope, which is done nicely. I can't say that it's my favorite accessory, but it is surely befitting of a mad scientist. And he gets a little beaker with a stirring rod. The rod is glued into the cup, thank God, because that would go missing relatively easy. The TGRI manual book is awesome. That is exactly what I wanna see from NECA Toys, and remember it's TGRI, these are based off of the movie, so to speak, right? The old Jim Henson one, he holds it nicely, but I just like how they included that in there somehow, some way. You also get a pair of goggles, kinda sorta steampunkish, you'll notice that they are a purple banded pair of goggles to reflect Donatello's purple nature. Now, you get two head portraits, which are very cool to see. This one is all wrapped up, He's got some very cool, interesting eyes, a little bit of a clear plastic. Mine has some residual paint from the goggles being on. I sort of had to peel it off, especially on the back. You get sort of roughed up paint, unfortunately. But the goggles do fit on relatively nice. You can use it on either head, and it just looks cool. He's removing his hat, he's pulling off the goggles, and he is spooking everyone around him. So the effect is there. This is a very creepy looking at Donatello, and I'm very happy with it. You can certainly customize the looks for this Donatello. You can have the goggles sort of resting on his turtle forehead, which definitely does look cool, or you can just put the hat on there. The hat is simply done. It's elegant. It's got a black band painted around it. No complaints about his hat. You get some clear plastic feet, which I absolutely love, again, to reflect the invisible nature. You got peg holes, you got enough movement articulation in there. They look great. I love all the invisible parts for this Donatello. Likewise, with the hands. These definitely do look nice. And you get an assortment of other item, accessory, weapon holding hands, especially these, which I particularly like the more outstretched, monstrous hand. You get a Donatello bow staff, which definitely looks good. It's one that we have seen before, but rest assured, if you were going for just that traditional Donatello look for holding the bow staff, he achieves it quite nicely. So again, much like the hats, no problemos with Donatello's bow staff. The figure itself, very creepy this time around. This is a more monstrous Donatello than what we're usually getting with old Donnie, right? I like that he has the trench coat, he's got the buttons. It's a lot of TMNT lore mashed into one. It's kind of a big turtle in a trench coat, along with the mad scientist. I love his feet right here, bandaged up, and his toes are the thing that is the clear plastic. So again, nice touches. Very well thought out. I like this with the Universal Monsters line. You can tell the ones that they really had a lot of fun with. The backside has a shell with all sorts of pizza around it. 
Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, although you just kind of have to think, okay, he cut out a hole in his trench coats. That way the shell can poke through. You can put the belt and the bow staff, yada, yada. You get the idea. Don't think too much about it. The pizza in the shell is just awesome. I love that look. And you have the straps to insert the bow staff, much like the movie Donatello. You can simply just insert it just like that, kind of get it going. And then what you would do is just kind of pull on the tabs right there, just slowly, and it will keep it nice and sturdy. Donatello's head portrait on this one, you got some hair poking through. He's kind of got the Tim Burton Nightmare for Christmas look. The heads are unfortunately very loose. You can pop the heads off, the hands off, to kind of give him more of that invisible man look, you know what I'm saying? But the invisible hands with this particular head sculpt is quite nice, no problems whatsoever. But I rather like this one, with or without the goggles. Kind of sort of goofy with the goggles. But like I said, that's the one downside. It's not incredibly loose, but each of the head portraits, if you do end up knocking it wrong, it'll just kind of slump forward. And that's kind of a bummer, right? You want the head to kind of keep aloft. I like all the different parts of the hair. That's kind of a gummy rubberized plastic, so you're not going to break anything off. But simply just push down as much as you can on the head, and it will usually stay in place but it can be kind of cumbersome, especially when switching out the heads, you can kind of see, I was kind of hoping that this one would fit a little bit better. This one has double jointed articulation in the neck and then at the top part of the head, whereas this one is just all one piece. So you get a little bit of extra movement in the more bandaged head, but not by much, right? That being said, with the articulation in the arms, they will go all the way up. Nothing at the bicep, but he does have double jointed elbows, the wrists, and see what I mean? You kind of sort of knock them, and then the head will just slump forward. And again, for me, it's not a huge problem. It's just more of a nuisance than anything when you try to pose him around. The legs will kind of sort of get caught up within the jacket part. He does have a little bit of a waist, kind of sort of. And then to really get in there for the knees, you'll see they have swivel. He's got double jointed knees, but the jacket makes it kind of hard to get in there and then move the knees and such around. To swap out for the invisible parts, you simply just pull down on the pegs and they just pop out and you can insert the inviso legs, which I totally love. I love that his toes are poking through with the bandages, the other one, but the invisible legs are a lot of fun. The jacket will kind of sort of work with you and kind of standing him up, kind of getting him into a cool Donatello pose. But again, it's more of a hindrance than anything. The goggles are cool, the hat is cool, it's a cool looking Donatello. Now, of course, being the fourth turtle that we've been waiting for to kind of complete this TMNTX Universal Monsters line, he does fit in quite nicely. Although I will say, Donatello for this particular group of turtles seems to be the monstrous leader. All of them are kind of tongue in cheek, fun sort of monsters, right? Not too freaky. But this Donatello definitely does take the cake. And when you compare him with Casey Jones and Splinter and April O'Neil, again, he's a little bit on the short side, as a turtle do, right? But to have all of these now in a solid collection of Universal Monsters X TMNT figures, they are a lot of fun. Especially since now that we have... This kind of, sort of, maybe, is it done collection? We don't really know. There have been hints as uh, to what may be in the future, especially to the degree of maybe Foot Soldiers, maybe Shredder, other movie-type TMNT characters. But honestly, if this is actually all we got and they were done, it's a solid lineup of figures, then we could kind of go through them. Why not? It's real fast. Raphael was the first as the Frankenstein monster. He's awesome. All the creativity in these figures really show. From the packaging, the artwork, it's all awesome. I absolutely love this Raphael. Leonardo, believe it or not, is my favorite. He has a lot going on for him. He harkens back to the original Playmates line with the whole storage shell. He's just a cool looking figure. More of this, right? Just kind of a mishmash of all the stuff that makes TMNT fun. April O'Neil has actually grown on me as the line has continued. At first, I thought she wasn't monstrous enough, but in actuality, she's a nice break from the over-exaggerated creepiness of the turtles, especially Donatello now. So she definitely does stand out as the one and only Bride of Frankenstein. Michelangelo is on the flip side to that. I love how monstrous this guy is. From his 
two head portraits, the peeled back lips to show his teeth, much like some of the costumes from the original TMNT movie. They nailed it. Again, all the creativity, all the thought process, it's evident within each one of these TMNT characters. Now with Splinter, I still stand by my original thoughts in my video. He's very much the boring character of the wave. Narratively, I get where they're going. He's the monster hunter. Is he going after the turtles? More than likely, he's going after maybe a vampire, a vampire shredder, something to that degree. So, yes, he stays at the lower end, but he's still a fun, monstrous type figure. Casey Jones, they absolutely nailed this. This is a lot of fun, and he is my second favorite of the line. It's just a very fun-looking figure, again, emphasizing all the creative aspects, all the thoughts about what you know about Casey Jones, and especially with the black costume along with little elements of red, he's definitely a monstrous standout. And now to finalize it with Donatello. Donatello is a little bit of a villain to me. Where the other turtles are having fun with it, maybe it's a costume party. You don't really know with this figure, to be quite honest with you, but I kind of like it at the same time. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new NECA Toys TMNT X Universal Monsters figure, Donatello as the Invisible Man. It's an awesome figure. Across the board, all the turtles, you can tell NECA Toys really brought the creativity. They had a lot of fun with this line and they really made some awesome toys. These are art pieces in and of themselves. Again, the artwork, Groman's participation in this, everyone who contributed nailed it with the exception of splinter i'm just gonna say but you've heard my thoughts of course and now i'm curious to know yours comment below let me know let's talk everything tmntx universal monsters and i'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember what do they got in store for this guy can't wait to find out when they do let me know what you found i'll talk to you guys soon adios